Hi, Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses. This is part two of our walking tour of our retail greenhouses, May 2020. So here we are um, in what we call the big house. Um, this is uh, one of our retail areas, again, close to the public um, in this COVID situation. But here we have a greenhouse that runs cold. We run down about 45 degrees in the winter time and it has a fairly high ceiling. So we have a lot of big plants in here. Many of these are planted in the ground, They've been here for decades. Uh, the house was built in about 1940s. It's a greenhouse where it has a lot of canopy and a lot of plant material in it. So a lot of things in here tolerate lower light or they tolerate the cool temperatures or the cool temperatures initiate the flowering. And that usually is over by now, that um, tr trigger mechanism for blooming, uh, but it's still places where we grow these plants throughout the year. Um, there's Uriops pectinata, the yellow daisy with a silver gray foliage. It is just going out of bloom now. It's a winter blooming plant. Short days stimulate it, but it also tolerates cold temperatures that this house is in. This is a Justicia spicegia. I see the, the orange flowers coming off of the top here, and you can see that this is a bloom, another one's coming, and throughout the summertime, this will just continue to flower, um, not pretty much nonstop. It's fairly showy at times. The flowers are a little thin. You can see here on the stalks, they're a little thin, but the, look at the bud coming on that. It will actually put out a huge amount of floral beauty over that, so the summertime period. This is an interesting plant that um, is really stemadenia, and it has a wonderful fragrance to it. Um, it's a little bit tricky to grow, only in that most of them are grown from seed, and so as a container plant, they get to have to get to be pretty good sized trees, not containable so much in greenhouses or even uh, sunrooms and such. But these we root by air layer. They don't actually root by cutting very well, but we root them by layer and the plants immediately go into flower. The only downside to this plant is that when grown in greenhouses or conservatories and such, it comes down with edema, which is a growth that forms on the back sides of the leaves. Actually, I can see just the beginning of a little bit of white specks there that are starting on the leaf. And it will create this white hairy area that eventually will turn kind of black. And people that get it, they don't understand what it is and it becomes a bug issue or disease issue. It's actually a physiological issue. If you put it outside in the summertime, it'll go away. But when you move it into the greenhouses or sunroom or even a house like that, that physiological characteristic comes back. And then, you know, obviously there's concern over that. This is Lord Fortenry, which is one of our um, fuchsias. Fuchsias obviously are a huge commercial crop, baskets and so on are grown of it. This is, came to us from Longwood Gardens. It is pretty much the most foolproof fuchsia that we have ever found. It takes the heat of summer. It doesn't have any or many disease issues. Um, and it'll be in flower even in the heat of summer here in Connecticut where we can get pretty hot in the greenhouse. This thing just keeps on going. And there, as far as I know, there really are very few fuchsias that can tolerate that kind of distress. We have uh, the very end of our um, Brenfelsia here. There's a couple of names on this. This is actually uh, maybe Grandiflora, Apossiflora. Actually has fragrance to it and it's seasonal. But it has a very large flower and you can see the flowers fade from the dark purple opening up, then they fade to a lighter purple, and then eventually they come to this white as they go by. So it's common name is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But there is a wonderful fragrance to this. It's really sweet. And the blooming for this goes on for about four or five months, and then um, it shuts down, goes back into growth until the next winter cycle. Yeah, the Tacoma stands. This is a uh, just beginning to flower here. You see the buds swarming up here. Um, this is Gold Star, which is uh, smaller flower than typical stands, and actually I think it's probably a different species. It has a wonderful smell. Very light, very very sweet, um, and 
we, there's many Tacomas that are in the industry that are in the trade and they work great outdoors. This is the only one and we test every one we get in against this one. This is the only one that has the flowering capability as a greenhouse house plant. Um, then and it's the most freest blooming one we grow. Um, the other ones have many different color forms to them, but um, they just don't put out the flowers that um, Gold Star does. The lantana, the weeping lantana is a famous plant, it makes a great standard. Uh, just the beginning of Justicia carnia alba. Um, see the buds are forming here along the side. Yeah, this flower is pretty much for us all summer. It probably would go into the winter time too, but the house is cold, so that shuts it down some. Yeah, there's uh, Trachlospermum pink showers. Um, Trachlospermums are used freely in uh, southern areas as landscape plants. There's some varieties as ground covers. They work very well as um, container plants. It's in the Apocinaceae family, same as your plumerias and your vinca and such, and they're really, really tough plants in terms of drought stress. And, and I've had so many people that have used this or Asiatica, which are long blooming varieties or species. They take huge amount of drought stress, I guess that's part of it, and the shiny leaves actually uh, lend it to the dryness of the atmosphere. They usually come into flower in the springtime, and both this and Asiatica, which is our yellow one, is a plant on the other side here, um, are very long blooming, whereas Jasminoides, Trachlosperm Jasminoides, kind of has one flash of flowers and it's done. This goes on for months. You can see it's a pretty, pretty flower and a sweet fragrance to it. Very sweet. Yeah, above us here is our persimmon tree. This is the Fuyu persimmon. It's hardy probably two zones south of here, and this was planted uh, right after this greenhouse was built in the 1940s. There's a trunk of it right there. It's been here ever since, um, and it produces a ton of fruit for us. Um, this is the non-astringent persimmon, kind of a flat, not a pointed, but a flat one. You can eat them when they're hard. We do grafts on it, and um, they actually can make a relatively good container plant if you're handy with the pruning shears and you kind of get the cycle of it. You can actually can contain them um, in, in pots, although they're probably much happier um, being free growing out in the ground. Can't do it here in Connecticut, it's too cold. There are persimmons you can grow here in Connecticut. The hardy persimmon virginiana, which is our native, does grow here. Here's our uh, Cypress papyrus. Um, it lives here year round, but we, just about this time of year, we're gonna split this up and we're gonna take pieces outside and put them in some big pots for summertime growth. And uh, we collect seed off it, that's how we propagate it. You can see here, it's climbing out of the pot, the rhizome's going this way. This is the paper plant of Egypt, and it's a very fast grower. And some of these canes here are pretty tall. I mean, that's, that's a good eight feet plus um, from the, bottom of the soil up to the top. Um, but you know, even though they're really highlight plants here in this somewhat cold, darker greenhouse, it's done quite well. This is a plant that we um, got in a number of years ago uh, from seed. It's the bottle tree of Australia, Brachiochiton. And it actually, when it matures, and I don't know if it'll ever do it in a pot, it'll produce a huge bottle-like trunk and then a crown on the top of it. It's gonna be a while before this tree, little tree ever gets to that. But at the bottom here, you can see this huge root that comes out. And the interesting thing is that there's as much of a swollen caudex below soil, and that's probably a survival mechanism uh, for Australia, as there is above the plant. And we've used it, the small plants, which take huge amounts of drought stress, um, as bonsais, where you can put them in pots and get these great caudexes that come out of the soil, um, and then top prune it um, to maintain its size on it. Um, and, and it's really a resilient plant. The amount of drought this thing can take, I mean, that's I mean going away for vacation for three weeks and coming back and the plant's happy um, is quite amazing. A very, very tough subject and um, good for containers just for its form. Yeah, this is a giant. This is a butylon red tiger. We grow a lot of abutilons. They're great indoor plants. They're great house plants. They're great out plants for outside um, in pots in the summertime. But this is the only one that has that really deep veining and a closed petal form to it. However, it is really a giant. I mean, 
we're standing here, this is the pot that's sitting on the bench, but yeah, there's, if you stretch this out, it's probably 10 feet or more. And the petioles on it are quite long. So as a container plant, you've got to have some room to grow it in. It's not what we could consider a great windowsill plant. Then you have to get your pruning shears out to maintain it. But it has a very interesting color form. Um, and as all abutilons are, they're really vigorous plants that um, do great indoors or wherever you're growing them. Just got to remember they really like a fair amount of sunlight and they are somewhat soft growing, so you'd need to um, pay attention to your watering and fertilizer. They love to be fed. And we were just mentioning abutilons. This is a new hybrid. Um, it's called Little Sunshine. It's a, again, a butylon similar to the Tiger Red, except this is the one to grow in a pot and in containers because it's really dwarf. Um, Sage Reynolds hybridized this. He's a breeder down on Staten Island. He's done a great job with them and he's getting, he's been doing it for a number of years now. So he's getting, his stuff is getting better and better in terms of short size, compact, free blooming, great plant. It's got a little bit of a blush of um, orange in the flowers there. But as you can see, this bench is just, I mean, covered with flowers. I think it has commercial potential beyond Logies, but we will see how the market accepts it. It's brand new. We've just uh, released it this year. So here we are at the beginning of the greenhouses, what we call the longhouse. This is the entryway from our retail store, which unfortunately at the moment is closed. So our maintenance man, Mike Slavic, who is kind of a genius mechanically, um, is also has an artistic um, side to him, creative side to him. And he took our entry water fountain and recreated it. So it was uh, completely taken apart and he put in a pool with some water coming out of a chute at the top there and it runs into a pool and then down into what was originally our pond here. And right now we have a couple of frogs. There's one right down in there that's living in it happily. Um, they're still to the resident frogs here. Good sign to have frogs in greenhouses. That means the pesticide level is um, pretty low because they're very sensitive to it. Um, we haven't got to the point where this area is really covered with algae. We like to see all this green come over it because the cement that, or the mortar that was used is still quite fresh. But it'll quickly, in the greenhouses here where moisture and little fertilizer gets on, it'll quickly turn green and get that kind of awesome grotto look of a pond in the forest. And this was once filled with all kinds of crazy plants. We had to pull them all out. So now we've got the, the job, and that's our artistic side, of creating the beauty here of new plant material. We put some things in, things will get moved around. We're going to establish some things in here that are a little more permanent. And also, while we're here, we can look at a couple other plants because we love plants. Here's again is our medanilla. Look at how that plant has, is sh showing itself off here. You got new flower buds coming, and this will go on for quite a few months. There's our Pacastasia lutea, the lollipop flower, which is just beginning its flowering cycle for us in earnest, and this will go on for um, probably another six months or so before the short days of fall um, overtake us. And way up at the top here, we have our Khalifa uh, repens, which is the um, catkins, has the red catkins on it. Um, chenille plant is the um, upright variety. There's a Musiander. This is Erthophila. I actually bought it in as double red, and we had lost it, and so they sent me this red one up. But this is the true Erthophila, which is a very single flower to it. It's actually one of the stronger Musianders to grow, and it will flower for us nonstop, right through summer, all the way until fall. The strongness of it is that it doesn't go into a severe dormancy that many of the Musianders do. Thank you for joining the tour today. This is the second part of our tour of Logies Greenhouses. If you'd like more information, visit us at logies.com.